Uh, how's everybody doing? Hopefully good. Hopefully everybody's been good. When applying themselves to, you know, it's what they need to be applying themselves to. Uh, considering the fact that the last time I made a video was actually just meant to be a checkpoint or something along those lines. Oh, I was rewatching a video of mine, and uh, when I rewatched it, I basically it's been like a couple months since I actually have heard it. And for me, it was just like a like a little check, and I was like, oh wow, this is like a checkpoint. I mean, compared to how I was when I first um, was talking about these things, how have I been progressing? Uh, and basically, it was just like, well, normal, just normal stuff. And a never expansion of uh, knowledge and understanding on the things that I actually already know what I'm talking about. When I first started preaching these things, it was just like a general idea. It's like, oh, you know, just verses and, and scriptures like that. And I was just like, okay, you know, th these things just make you know, sense of themselves. You don't really need a teacher to actually tell you these sort of things, but especially when you just let the Bible actually interpret itself instead of you just trying to find someone to help you out with it. And that would basically be the real, you know, means for you to actually be able to understand what you're reading. Uh, because once you actually get pastors and other individuals to teach you what you, you know, to quote unquote teach you what you actually are reading, you know, this is when, you know, these individuals pass on their doctrines to you, false or actually truth. And while, yeah, they could have some, you know, a little bit of knowledge as to what they actually know concerning, like, grace and mercy and faith and what it actually means based on their experiences in Christ, uh, how he's been molding them and teaching them through the facts of life and other things like that. And obviously, he's going to determine some sort of truth to it. But for the most part, you know, once it really gets to theology, once it gets to, once it gets to like the beliefs and the faith in which you actually believe in, uh, then that's when they start to deviate themselves away from what is actually written in the scriptures. And so them, they don't really equate that forever means forever. So like obeying the law of Moses being forever, uh, the lake of fire being forever, and other little you know key principles like that. It's like obviously God has the for knowledge as to why he you know he says these sort of things instead of you just thinking that he says these things and then there's some sort of uh, deadline or some sort of you know uh, ending to whatever he has said to stay as forever. I mean, mm, how would I quote this? Whatever he already has stated as forever, and then he actually has stated another forever on top of that, and that should be you know. Uh, rule of thumb, right? It's like, okay, I understand what you're saying and other things like that. Uh, but yeah, this video isn't actually meant to, you know, to talk about that. It's just to bring some awareness uh, when you actually are hearing another individual's perspective on certain doctrines, doctrines and teachings that you realistically have no idea what they're talking about or uh, you already have, you know, been raised up uh taught something differently and you're just like well what is this kid talking about uh day of the lord elijah obviously obey the law of moses and yeah i mean keep it simple types of principles like that uh so yeah so basically i was just talking to christ right now right and he, i was just telling him about certain things about love this and love that and you love me and i know that you do and i love you too and i'm just like well it's kind of subjective you know these things in themselves are not really anything that an individual needs to be so you know emphasized about and emphasized in that they're just like well you know i love you lord and you know it, it's just the overall you know principle of it all is the fact that there's going to be individuals that are going to go into the lake of fire that christ loves very uh very much right and, and the very sad thing about it is that love is not going to be the, uh the main reason that's going to keep you out of the lake of fire you're still gonna have to do a lot on your part and on your end to actually ensure that you're doing everything that Christ wants you to do. Instead of you just consistently betting on his love uh, to keep you away from things that you obviously know you shouldn't be doing and other, you know, little principles like that. I mean, I know I'm saying principles a lot, but I'm really saying the definition of what the word actually means. You know, there's a lot of principles that you need to be living by and need to be governed by instead of you just being so uh, lazy, not your lie, and just, you know... Not being as strict with yourselves as you would, if you would have, you know, taken it at face value, or or maybe not, right? Or it could have been something else, but, uh, but yeah. So basically, this overall premise. I was talking to Christ. I was just telling him about subjectiveness and realistically, really coming to a knowledge of what it actually means uh, to obey Christ and these sort of principles in themselves. 
well, yeah, I already know these sort of, you know, scriptures and verses about if you love him, that you're going to obey him. I mean, there's going to come a time in your life where you actually have already gained that level of knowledge as to why you actually obey these things, you know. Like the same exact basis as to why when you were little kids, you're like, why do I have to do this, mom? Why do I have to be, eat veggies? Why do I have to do these sort of things? And, you know, then you got older, you're like, okay, calories and, you know, nutrition and other things like that that I need for my body. This is the reason why. And I'm over here trying to get ice cream for breakfast. This is basically the same as that concept that you need to be understanding and grasping when you actually are uh, reading the scriptures and the teachings of Christ that you need to begin applying to your lives. Because realistically, you aren't even able to discern the fact that those uh, types of teachings and commandments that Christ already had given to every Christian in the body of Christ were, you know, defense mechanisms and, and coping skills for certain situations that he specifically addressed in those times, uh, just because they have always been happening, sadly. And that's just something that individuals also fail to you know, notice is they feel very alone in these sort of situations, like they're the first person that's actually going through these sort of things. And because of that, you know, they tend to, you know, deviate themselves away from crisis commandments and just from doing good things and good works. And they fail to actually keep it simple when it does come to, you know, really just applying wisdom and, you know, just good teachings and virtues and uh, good advice that the parents obviously have taught them at a young age and they're just like they make it in very legalistic terms sadly but that's not the main cause of it uh, it's like half and half it's half this and half them over complicating uh, the situation and that would more or less be the main reason as to why I mean legalism and over uh, overcomplicating situations is more or less the same thing but you know I was just talking to him, and it was just, you know, basically just because I already have that level of knowledge, uh, and I understand exactly why Christ himself had already commanded us to do the things that he already told us, because of the overall protection that comes with obeying Christ, and those sort of principles in themselves, uh, then that's why I already know, you know, it's not really something that can reflect, you know, your love for God or His love for you, you know, it just has to deal with, you know, overall laws and guidelines for every individual to actually be walking in, you know, we already have to obey the law because this is just what already is uh, the law of the land, which is just something that we already have common knowledge and understanding towards, and this is the same exact principle, you know, there's no different at all whatsoever when you actually do view these things as that because of, you know, your lack of obedience to these sort of commandments is going to bring ailments and infirmities to your life. And it's realistically that simple, you know. So in short, yeah, obviously I am trying to detach you away from that overall uh, way of thinking where you're just like, well, this is just, uh, I have to obey Christ because I love Him and other things like that. I mean, there's other means for you to actually show Him that you uh, do love Him, but you're going to have to obey Him. That has to be a mandatory thing because... You know, you using that as, you know, I love you, Christ, and uh, and using that as a crutch for you to, you know, as a means and a drive to ensure that you always uh, obey Christ uh, is, you know, a motivating factor. But for the most part, you know, I'm not even going to say for me. I'm just saying, you know, once I actually got over that hump in the road for me to, you know, because obviously I used to repeat those same exact things as well. I used to be saying, well, I love you, Christ, and I'm going to do everything I can to obey you because I love you that much. But then once I actually got over the hump in the road, which is just my experience, I realized that there was realistically no real reason or any, you know, cause for me to deviate myself from many of those sort of teachings that Christ himself already had commanded us just because of the overall protection that came from obeying him. You know, loving your enemies was just a means of protection against actually getting bitter uh, and avoiding those sort of situations and, you know, walking in this unforgiving spirit or uh, and not being so forgiving of situations where you are just easily able to overlook, you know, just petty things that individuals do that everybody goes through on a regular basis. And, you know, it really does produce a mature character on your end and you really are able to grow uh, into just a rational, uh, productive member of society where you actually are able to not get, you know, you're really able to pacify situations and do other things like that. You're very understanding of people just because you already have been in those sort of situations and scenarios uh, 
and other individuals can you know tell that you're actually right like that uh other individuals may be you know stubborn but whatever again these things themselves is you know the overall foundation of it all is that you're not called that all to deviate yourself from any of christ's commandments you know that would be the overall you know foundation uh, that you need to be able to understand uh so basically that was the the little hump uh, in the road that i got over and it, it was like you know it's not that i would use god's love and my love for him as a crush for me to ensure that um i was always doing the right thing it was just a lack of understanding as to why christ had even told us to do that uh and do the things that he commanded us to do and once i realistically got that knowledge for me to know and to understand that there was no real purpose for me to deviate myself uh from any of his commandments you know then that's when it realistically really hit me right and i was just like oh I was like, this, you know, it just makes more sense. And I was just like, well, for the overall spiritual side of these things, I was able to understand that because, you know, God is spirit, all of these things reflect, you know, what he actually is. Uh, and, and they reflect, you know, well, that, you know, it, it's just, it was a very simple sentence, but it was really, you know, uh, thought provoking, I would say. Uh, but for sure, you know, it's because God is spirit, you know, you're actually able to understand these sort of things and, and to avoid the flesh and to avoid all the things that would eventually cause us to divide ourselves and to get into some sort of jealousy or envy. And another thing is like that, that realistically, uh, individuals aren't really able to understand and get at that level because of uh, they're very carnal, they don't understand it. Uh, you know, the older individuals, like, you know, 55-year-olds, 65-year-olds, they already have common ground on that to an extent. They already know that you have to be neighborly and other things, politeness and and just things like that that everybody just generally is approving of uh, and, you know, advances uh, to ensure that everybody is just on the same page and nobody's punching people in the face for no apparent reason just because you stepped on their shoes or or something along those lines, right? Uh, but, you know, the overall premise was, you know, the love aspect of these things is still there, right? But it's kind of like it shifts its focus because once you actually are obeying all of Christ's commandments, you already have recognized, uh, you know, that there's no alternative uh, to it. And then you actually begin to love Christ for his actual character and as a person, just like how you love your friends, like your wife, like your neighbors, or just individuals you've been knowing for a very long time. And so it starts being such a, you know, um, an authoritative love, I guess I would define it as because you're doing it out of obedience to Christ. And it starts to really be, you know, you actually loving uh, Christ and you begin to actually fall in love with Christ and love his person. Because I know those, those are the one, one of the most difficult things to get over because it's like you're quote unquote struggling with these sort of sins. And yet you claim to love Christ and you already have that, com you know, you already have retained that uh, verse inside of your mind to know that if you love him, that you're going to obey Christ. And you're not living up to that standard uh, and to Christ's expectations. And because of that, it, it like weighs on your soul, sadly, because you want to be the super Christian uh, and you aren't realistically addressing the demonic and the spiritual side of it. And so you're just suffering and going through so many other different things. You're not bothering to deliver yourselves because you're very carnal uh, and... You know, that, that's just a lot of the issues as well. That was also what helped me get out of it. Uh, for me to actually be able to understand, for me to actually grasp uh, the fact of, you know, I could get rid of these sort of thoughts and these negative thoughts and these struggles if I just would personify it like that. Uh, and like that, I would actually end up getting delivered. It would just have to be on my own, you know, discipline and strictness uh, and just being biblically oriented and uh, just, what is it? work-based oriented when everything that you essentially do has to deal with biblical standards and biblical things like watching the bible on netflix or uh, just you know reading the scriptures hearing audio bible books and just you know really being saturated in the word and those sort of things in themselves to the point where you actually are just uh, you brainwash yourself away from what you know this culture has already taught us to act react how we need to you know essentially be in public and other things like that uh but but yeah you know so obviously the main premise of it would just be for you to actually detach yourself from that legalistic part of those things uh and you know from obeying christ and loving christ uh and obeying christ because of the love that you actually have uh for him 
uh, and to really you know fall in love with this character and what his person actually is because basically all of his commandments and teachings is the very embodiment of what christ in short actually is that's what he actually is that's who christ is at his very core and that's what people don't actually understand you know and although christ is judge and he is wrath and he is fury uh that is sadly not for you or for anyone else you know that is a part of the kingdom of light and, and not a part of the kingdom of darkness willingly or you know unwillingly uh and that's just something that you need to be able to understand you know there's going to come a time in your life where you are actually struggling with the sins that you're struggling with because you finally have gotten over it there's going to be a time in your life where you actually are in heaven if you do overcome these sort of struggles if you don't overcome you're going straight into the lake of fire okay and i'm not going to sugarcoat anything for you that's it uh i know you want to believe that christ would actually have mercy you know for you because he loves you and other things like that but like i mentioned earlier he loves plenty of individuals that are going to end up going into the lake of fire and he's loving them currently in the future while they're burning in there so you seriously need to you know really be rational and really view these things with honest eyes and, and that way you actually bear fruit uh of repentance and doing other things like that but uh so yeah i mean this seems like a pretty basic teaching or maybe it sounds basic to me because i already know uh, but for the most part, it's just getting you to understand that these sort of, you know, commandments of Christ is just no alternative to any of those things in themselves. Uh, and that's just something that is so difficult to get individuals is inside of their heads because it's just like, well, I'm obligated to obey these things because I'm obligated to eat. Uh, to obey these things i don't understand why and um, because they don't actually understand why or maybe they just say it's because god is god you know they really lack that knowledge uh and the depth of you know christ's teachings and once you actually begin to really gain that level of experience as you begin to just consistently always obey christ uh then it's going to teach you in these sort of circumstances and scenarios because you already have been beat in the wood uh time and time again to the point already has taught you uh, patience, self-control, awareness, and, you know, just other things uh, like that, and experience, and you're actually able to understand and grow, uh, and you're actually able to, you know, better cope with certain situations that come inside of your life, because you've already been through even worse situations than that, and to you, it's just like, okay, I understand, you know, you all go through this, and it's not realistically that big an issue for you to, and to act like that, and, it's, you know, obviously, that's a lot of wisdom on your end to actually be able to produce those sort of results uh but obviously wisdom never comes overnight sadly uh you know but for you that you actually want to begin applying yourself but just be realistic with these sort of things uh when you are actually younger 20 or however old you are uh how foolish did you look honestly i could look back when i was in those those times it wasn't even the fact that i used to think that i was that uh, uh intelligent but it was just the fact how i used to carry myself uh, as you know um how would i word it very oblivious to the fact of what i didn't know and because of that uh i was very naive uh, yeah that's my own naivety is just what is very you know embarrassing for myself it's just like oh my goodness i can't believe i used to think like that and i can't believe i used to carry myself like that even though i didn't know half the things that i know now uh and it's just you know to that extent then to be able to fall for these sort of traps and temptations that the devil you know puts inside of your life to you know cause suffrage and pain for you that christ sends inside of your life to actually be able to refine your character it is just it's, it's it's very sad you know it's disappointing you know to be able to see those sort of things and how easy those temptations actually were now that you know and understand why they even came inside of your life uh and how to actually be able to cope with them uh as well it's just like wow it's, it's a lot of unnecessary suffrages and avoidable you know temptations had you actually have known how to you know cope with these sort of situations uh, ahead of time but because you were young dumb and clueless you know, you were just like, well, whatever, these sort of things. And, you know, I have to act like this because my mom told me this. And basically, that's what carries you through uh, for a majority of your life until finally, you know, Christ puts these sort of situations in your life that you realistically have no idea how to cope with them. And he's basically, you know, telling you now what, now what are you going to do? What's going to be your main crush that you're going to lean on in this situation? And, you know, sadly, 
mostly people always uh, tend to lean on the crutch of you know rage anger uh impatience frustration uh cursing profanity uh, and other things you know like that pettiness they begin acting petty uh towards the other individual and so uh, obviously because christ is actually you know applying the same exact principle to every single individual on the face of this earth whether they're christian or not everyone has a choice right you know right from wrong uh, and these people in short choose the wrong either way uh and so and then it gets to you as a christian who knows this level of knowledge and you know and understanding uh, and he basically asks you the same exact question what crutch are you going to lean on in this situation and realistically what, what is the answer that you're going to give him whatever you do initially is basically going to be the exact response that he's going to get uh from you and that's something that you need to understand as well is that every single reaction and every single you know rise of emotion that you experience in this body and in this in this lifetime uh it, you essentially have to suffer for it. if you don't actually acknowledge the fact that these devils are able to stir up your heart and you come inside of your life to tempt these sort of reactions out of you and you don't reject these sort of emotions and reactions and then what is going to happen you're going to fall and into sin and take the bait of the enemy and the devil and he's going to ruin your life you're going to be judged for the situation as if you did fall uh, for this sin and sadly you know it's going to take a lot of maturity on your end for you to actually accept uh, what i just mentioned uh because everybody just wants to define sin nobody actually wants to confront that issue itself uh until they find they're actually able to get over that hump in the road and to be able to look back and think wow what an idiot and what a fool i was clearly in sin and just because i was innocent i didn't want to admit it again you know i don't even want to admit that because of the fact that how scary christ actually is how scary god is i would have been there also but uh yeah grace and peace be multiplied to you the grace is to know what i'm saying the peace to know that it's sent from god uh, and the mercy is to actually be able to receive these sort of uh, graces uh, and the love of the lord jesus christ and the grace of the lord jesus christ reign in your hearts and be with you all so so yeah basically looking back and reflecting being able to recognize and know for certain why i was failing is just because i didn't know how to cope with those sort of situations and you know it seems like a pretty simple fix and pretty simple remedy for you to be able to to know. It's like, oh, you know, you already know what's broken. You know how to be able to fix it. Uh, and But realistically, you know, these sort of situations don't happen like that. And Christ always, always puts the situations in your life that you don't actually know how to cope with uh, to bring it to your attention and to your awareness. That way you actually are able to make good use of your time. Uh, and as well as you're actually able to reflect on Christ's ways and how he's actually able to use everything and anything to be able to refine your character, how you've been passing certain tests that people typically didn't pass, um, how you completely failed that test that came inside of your life. Uh, deliverance is going to be your friend, and I'm going to repeat that. Uh, deliverance is going to be your best friend in this in this case and scenario just because of the fact that you know these sort of temptations and legalities that come inside of your life uh are coming inside of your life for that specific purpose those rise of emotions and anger and feelings that you essentially are experiencing on a regular basis are all demonic you know and you know if you don't actually are if you aren't realistically able to uh, really believe that and accept that as truth it's demonic but it is definitely you're going to accept every single one of these temptations which christ never did as yourself and you're going to have responsibility for these things i know i mentioned that in the past video but you really have to reflect on these sort of well, you know thoughts and these sort of sentences of mine which sort of these you know temptations and which and which sort of these which uh, which sort of these emotions are really yourselves I mean, how many times do you think if Christ is really to open your eyes and to show you uh, these sort of things as to which emotions were actually yourself and which ones you were just being toyed with in your heart and every single time, well, maybe like a 95% rate, it was demonic. I mean, you would just feel foolish and stupid. It's like, well, yeah, you know, obviously I'm a pawn in the devil's game and he's basically, you know, using me for anything and everything that he actually wants. You, he's advancing his own agenda in my life. And here I am just taking responsibility for these sort of temptations because I feel that I'm tempted. And because I'm tempted, I already have fallen into sin uh, and these sort of things. Uh, and everybody's going through it, sadly, and I went through it as well. And because of that, it 
put such a strain in my, you know, relationship with Christ uh, and how I essentially wanted to really be on good terms with him and really be reconciled with him uh, to the point that, you know, he wasn't mad at me anymore and we were on good terms and he was actually able to look me in the eyes and other little things like that. But it was just for the overall, you know, temptation part of these things. I mean, not being able to actually acknowledge the fact of what is actually happening. Christ specifically told us that devils exist, and demons come inside of individuals' life. To be able to tempt them to fall into sin, Paul addressed it, Peter addressed it, you know, so many other individuals addressed it. And then for you to just completely dismiss it as a Christian would just be erroneous on your end. You must and you need to automatically put that as your foundation for all of these sort of, you know, um, times to really obey Christ and those sort of situations that do come inside of your life because if you don't have that foundation of your acknowledgement of the spiritual and that demons are coming inside of your life to be able to you know manipulate you and to cause you to fall into sin and to tempt you and you take responsibility for those sort of situations it's a wrap for you sadly you end up falling for uh, for these sort of temptations and falling on your face and you didn't even fall into sin, sadly, but they already have guilted you to that extent. And you're over here just thinking like, wow, and I'm, I'm this wretch. And you, it's not even the fact that you already have brought in so much more legality. It's just the fact and the principle of the fact you think that they should be there. And because you think they should be there, they already have deceived you uh, to be inside of your life. And they're just beating you up about something that you realistically have never committed. It's like, well, yes, the temptation was there. And, and yes, the enticement was there. Whatever means of them actually being able to tempt you and entice you uh, was the real craft, right? And the real witchcraft they were putting in, in, you know, the spell that they were putting over your head. But all those were means and assets to be able to get you to fall into sin, and that's it. But if you didn't even bother falling into sin or fall, or lusting or other things like that, or they put it like a little trance of lust over you or a little uh, emotion of lust in you, but you didn't take the bait. You essentially didn't fall into sin. You should confess it regardless. But for the most part, you know, this is this is for uh, the time is in the future. You know, this is just for you to think ahead of time and to avoid the sort of situations entirely because it will come. Uh, and yeah, other times you already have those sort of uh, emotions and sins inside of your heart. And because you already have those things uh, in there, the sins are repeatedly being committed forever and ever on a regular basis and if you never repent of those things it, and if you never uh, get rid of them it's like you're always committing the sin sadly that's just how christ is, essentially sees it when you have all these curses of iniquity inside of your heart that you're repeatedly getting paid for even though you haven't actually committed the sins and because of you know how holy god actually is you're essentially going to be paying for all of those sins until you actually repent or get rid of them. And, you know, it's realistically that simple, but people don't actually recognize it and don't really acknowledge how holy Christ actually is. They're just like, well, I have to, you know, I have to commit this sin. But because of the fact that the sin is just there and the next time that you essentially do fall into the sin or you're tempted, you're going to fall into the sin automatically. You know, that's, you know, the overall you know, principle of it all. I know it seems like a mechanical way or it's automatically like this, you know. I know I'm saying it like that, but that's not sure what it's actually like. And, you know, it, who are you to say that you're actually not, you're going to avoid the temptation entirely the next time uh, if you actually do fall into sin? Because more or less, you're not going to. You're not going to definitely pass that test at all to just get rid of it. I'm just saying this for you to actually better be safe than sorry and to bring an overall awareness and understanding uh, as to why certain individuals do end up paying for their sins that they don't actually commit. It's just because of the fact of the, you know, the, the devils that they're harboring inside of their heart. They already have that inside of them, just like how Christ already had told us that out of the, you know, whatever comes out of a man's heart is what defiles him. These individuals are already defiled, uh, and that's just something that you need to be able to understand, uh, to be clean in the inside of your cup, that the outside may look clean, uh, and that way you actually are able to understand it. Your treasures of your heart, also those things in themselves, it is just, you know, in the overall virtue and integrity that you actually have, that you already have recognized that there's no alternative to any of Christ's commandments, the human side of, you know, uh, of being a Christian and just being loving and compassionate as well as the other virtue uh, of you just 
doing these things because there's no other way and because it's just how you are uh and you know obeying christ's commandments because that's just how you are these are three very highly prized treasures that you need to be practicing immediately and if i know it's like don't fake it or whatever you need to really you know put yourself in that mindset of you actually already acting those sort of uh virtues out and as if you already just do it naturally and automatically because it's gonna help sadly it's like a mind hack i don't know why it helps it's like a crutch or something like that or it's just a means to be able to help you understand uh humbleness and it humbles you down because you actually already have recognized that you already have attained what you prayed for and that scripture as well whatever christ had told us in the scripture is that whatever you pray for believe that you have received it and it will get answered it's kind of like the same premise except more faith based and you have a lot more faith backing it up uh but yeah uh so realistically it's the subject uh wow oh sorry the subjective part of you know of loving christ and because you love christ that's what you that's why you actually obey him uh it's just you actually i'm trying to get you to fall in love with christ's person who actually is in the same exact manner as how you fall in love with your parents once you actually know where they came from and all those sort of things uh and your spouse your friends uh you've been hanging out with them for a long time and you know really removing the legalistic side of it of you actually obeying christ because you love him as just something that you already have accomplished and something that you've finally gotten over. So, you know, it's almost as if you're in heaven and you already have, you know, laid your life down for Christ and things like that. Um, and now you're just actually able to enjoy uh, Christ in his fullness and, and, and then fullness for you to actually be able to really uh, benefit that much more from his real person, from his teachings. Uh, and everything else that he essentially is uh why sayings all these things automatically just come from christ because uh, it's holy spirit breath and because of these things you should automatically want to gravitate towards you know proverbs and other wise sayings and wisdom itself to obey it uh consistently and always and be realistically really able to recognize that there's no alternative uh to any of those proverbs as the only means for you know, your means to be able to cope with those sort of situations in your life when they do arise and when they do come. But, you know, it's, it's that simple. Uh, sadly, well, it sounds simple, but is it going to be easy? That's going to be another thing and another task. Pride is going to be, you know, your main enemy in this sort of case because as pride has to deal with self. If you aren't actually really able to deny yourself in those sort of instances and in those times, you know, you can't let individuals do that to you, you know, in certain situations like that, then just forget about it, honestly. You really have to renounce your pride yourselves uh, and everything that comes with it or you're just not going to progress as rapidly as you would like it really takes a lot of humility and meekness for you to really be able to live this sort of principle out and as well as you know an overall willingness and the willpower to want to persevere and to actually want to succeed in this sort of teaching and virtues to apply to your life and to just not deal with any of the negative uh, emotions inside of uh of these uh temptations test trials uh, that Christ himself is going to throw inside of your life and in your path deliverance again is, is your friend in this case and scenario and in this and in these instances anytime you already know that you're going to fall for these sort of temptations or you're, you aren't actually able to deny yourself or you're, you're, you know you're going to feel proud or, or something like that and then yeah, you're going to have to deliver yourself sadly you're going to have to get rid of all these sort of nasty devils that are going to cause you to fall into sin and just humble yourself down because God always gives grace to the lowly and to the humble but every single time he always resists the proud for a specific reason because they're basically know-it-alls uh and you know I mean that's kind of like the synopsis of pride uh, you know are you a know-it-all do you know it all no obviously God is the only individual and then for you to get on this high horse higher than God uh and obviously now you're actually able to understand why it's so horrible and why it's so bad from an individual who is very finite and very limited in comprehension, understanding, knowledge, and intelligence. But yeah, I mean, it's basically that simple for you to be able to understand and knowledge and, knowledge and, and grasp uh, in knowledge. But 
But yeah, I'm gonna ask the Holy Ghost what else he wants me to talk about. Yeah, he said the subjective part. That's something that you need to be able to understand as well. It's just the fact that in the future there's gonna come a time in your life where finally you're stress free and carefree uh, concerning these sort of trials and temptations and all these sort of sins that end up coming inside of your life. And because of it, you know, you really need to live in the future. Uh, you need to really live uh, from that perspective because, you know, you already have, you already, you've tasted it. You already have acknowledged the fact that it's just a mental issue. If you could already live it out right now, but you're just pretending, quote unquote, then the real issue is a mental, you know, problem. And that's what it essentially is. You just have no peace in that aspect of your life. And I know it sounds like crazy and silly that that's the main reason as to why you weren't actually able to uh, really get to that point and to that extent. But it's just because the devils are coming inside of your life to rob you of that peace and joy uh, that I'm trying to give you. And I'm really telling you that it's realistically that simple because it really is. I'm not saying it to you that you have to buy my book or you have to do these sort of things. You have to attend my classes. I mean, I'm just telling you the fact that if you let it be simple, it will be easy. But if you just want to continue, you know, making this thing into this sort of uh, enormous feat that nobody can actually do except me, then you're going to continually just install your, you know, progress and, and the types of results that you want to see, uh, sadly. And that's always going to happen until finally you do overcome it. And then you're actually able to see how simple and easy it really was. And you're going to be able to reflect and be able to recognize how much time you wasted uh but yeah the subjectiveness subjective and subjective and everything is subjective right once you actually have already conquered that little feed inside of your life as to why you actually do obey christ and you just do it because it just comes naturally to you because you have that level of knowledge and understanding as to why christ actually ended up you know commanding you to do these things then it's just like okay you know i've just been having a terrible mindset and approach towards these sort of commandments that Christ already had given me and because of it I'm suffering that much more and that's realistically it you know period at the end that's the real reason why uh but you know now I'm going to tell you why you have to actually obey these things and little commandments and teachings because you know I could list it out one after another as to why Christ told us to do this and why he told us to do that the loving your enemies part uh, that is the safest means and the easiest means for Christ to be able to protect you from actually being unforgiving uh, and for him to actually forgive you of all of your sins because you actually are really, you know, letting go of yourself and denying yourself to the point that you actually love individuals that come inside of your life to do damage to you and to actually hurt you. You're still wishing these individuals the best and because you are so centered and focused on this scripture commandment itself, you're not focused on the cares of the world. All you are essentially you're focused on is you know the kingdom of god and seeking that firstly you know that's you know kind of one and the same but not really you know it's just i'm just trying to help you to understand in the future you're going to be able to understand what i'm saying in this time and in that instance um, but you know it's just the overall protection that's just something that i was actually able to notice once i really began loving my enemies just to the fact that individuals that weren't practicing that way of thinking out they would always and consistently fall for the same it's like tactics and temptations of the enemy and the devil all around me and these individuals I obviously didn't believe in and that side of thing and didn't want to get interested uh in those in those details but they were consistently always automatically their first you know reaction to an individual actually doing something evil and wrong to them is to do the same thing back to them to them is they're not even original about it they'll straight up do the same exact thing that they did back to them and uh so an evil for an evil um, but while i was actually practicing those sort of you know principles out it was overcoming evil with good and just doing you know wishing you the best Praying for you, blessing you, praying Christ actually gives you some blessings in your life and not even being jealous or mad if, you know, Christ actually ends up answering my prayer. And I actually am able to see you benefit more than I'm benefiting in this lifetime and in this life. Maybe you have a better job than me, maybe you, and this and that. And that's perfectly fine and okay. And that was basically, you know, where I was at in, the, in those instances and in those times. And so... Basically, enough of those uh, situations ended up coming inside of my life, right? And it really got me to the point. And all those different types of scenarios and the same exact, uh, well, well, 
different types of forms, but the same exact uh, commandment of Christ just teaches you the overall same lesson and the same basis of it all for that principle itself. Loving your enemies, blessing those that curse you, all of it has to deal, you know, wishing individuals the best regardless of the situations is you genuinely caring for their soul and not realistically caring whether they're a witch or something else or a satanist or whatever the case may be but really wanting these individuals to actually make it because you genuinely love them uh, obviously it's the same with you know pedophiles and child molesters and all these sort of individuals as well is really wanting the very best for these sort of people racist racism I mean, you name it, whatever uh, individuals want to claim to be an enemy for you and to you. Uh, you know, th those are the types of principles that you need to be applying it to. And that was just the main, you know, teaching of Christ. That I was, I don't want to say teaching because they're commandments uh, that I applied uh, in my life. And because of it, I was actually able to really, you know, gain more knowledge and understanding as to every one of Christ's commandments. And all of it had to deal with, you know, character uh fruits being able to bear a lot of fruits that the father is glorified and not really falling for the flesh and the you know desires of the flesh and fulfilling those uh desires that the devils actually have uh to for you you know they actually want you to fall uh for these sort of temptations to ruin your life because if you actually end up uh falling and taking the bait for you, you're gonna have to suffer and learn the very hard lesson of compassion because of that and then you're gonna be like man i can't believe i'm suffering for these sort of things and this sucks man this, this is the worst thing ever you know how individuals will make fun of homeless people and then they end up being homeless it's just how it just ends up coming around and coming back around to it's the same exact principle sadly and uh, i don't know if it's a, a law or a rule of life and every individual that automatically whatever you say automatically comes back to you type of principle but it was just something that i noticed as well it's just that uh god has you know uh, not a, he's he knows how to make people feel salty about their uh decisions and uh that's essentially it but uh you know what are the teachings of christ that actually end up giving me i mean basically off of loving your enemies that's realistically really able to help you understand christ's character in person that way you actually aren't falling into you know, and satisfying the desires of the flesh that the devils in short have for you. You're not falling into rancor or, or dissension or bitterness or other things like that because you're already automatically practicing those sort of virtues uh, for your life. Overall, you know, general, you know, common knowledge that everybody has, fornication, adultery, these things in themselves are sins, drunkenness, uh, laziness. These are things that we already have means to be able to cope with those sort of situations because they're already pretty much pre uh, prevalent to our lives We're on a regular basis for us to be able to automatically just say no, right? Uh, and But, you know, loving your enemies, pettiness, there's a rise of pettiness for some strange reason. And every individual is just over here eating flesh. Uh, and those sort of things in themselves and you know these are just the easiest means for you to actually be able to combat the flesh and still be able to want to bless these sort of people and never ever think inside of your head that there's an alternative to these sort of commandments and teachings because that's the point that i was essentially at uh when i was really putting these things to practice consistently and on a regular basis i mean yes i was praying for three hours on an end or two hours I was always watching, you know, sermons and uh, spiritual warfare. I was engaging myself in these things and the deliverance and casting allegiance out of my vessel and out of my heart and doing those sort of principles as well. But, you know, for the most part, um, you know, it was the overall uh, forward knowledge of that before going out into the field and actually really putting these sort of uh, teachings and these sort of um wise things and, and advice to the test uh when these situations did end up coming inside of my life and in my path uh which was just something for me to be able to reflect and notice now uh it's not even that i noticed when i actually did ask christ to prune me uh and to do those certain things uh it was that my life seemed to get harder or other things like that that wasn't even the case or a scenario or or any of those sorts uh, you know things it was just the fact that i wasn't actually able to discern how christ actually was functioning how he was doing these things 
but I wasn't really aware that I was already going through these tests and trials, but it wasn't until I actually had asked to go through these sort of tests and trials that I began noticing um, that Christ answered my prayer and it made it that much more difficult for me to actually pass those tests. I mean, I look like a fool. I look stupid, right? But that's just, you know, how simple these things actually are. Uh, when these sort of situations actually ended up being over and done with, you know. I actually looked back and I reflected and I was just like, okay, wow. You know, and then I noticed the pattern. He consistently does it on a regular basis. And then I was like, okay, you know, this is just how essentially Christ actually works. And, you know, once you actually are able to discern and know for certain that it's going to happen again and again, you're just embedding the idea. Oh, sorry, that's what I was just trying to say. Once you actually discern that you're just embedding the idea that because you pray for it, Christ is answering your prayer, then you're finally able to overcome it because uh, these tests were coming inside of your life regardless of the situation. And you even started thinking back to the time before you actually prayed any of those things. You're like, man, my life was always like that, but I was actually able to cope with those sort of situations in a healthy manner or whatever the case may be. I was actually applying my mom's advice to these sort of situations that actually ended up coming in my life, and I was doing a good job at it. It's a mental issue, buddy. Sadly, the devil's really got inside of your head to be able to convince you that Christ is the green one. I can't believe he would do this to you. Doesn't he know that you need to cut you some slack? And it's like you're trying your best. You're trying your your best, Sarah, and you're over here just thinking you're this. What does he think you are? When have you fallen into sin? Have you even smoked marijuana? And obviously, you know, they try to put you on this high horse, try to exalt you as well to get this sort of worth and estimation out of you that you're this super person that you shouldn't be having to go through these tests, but absolutely, God is not a respecter of any persons. And everyone is going to have to suffer for everything uh, that everyone else has already suffered. And that's essentially here, you know, you aren't going to be exempt out of these things because you automatically were born into a rich family or those sort of situations. Christ does whatever he wants. And that's the overall foundation of it all for these tests that you need to have automatically, as well as, you know, being able to acknowledge the spiritual that the devils will come inside of your life uh, to over exaggerate the situation and, and to try to make it seem like, you know, to make you... Um, get dramatic about these sort of uh, scenarios and, and types of things that end up coming inside of your life. And then you aren't actually able to really uh, keep your composure uh, and to realistically really be able to um, pass these tests of flying colors. Uh, and that would ensure just be it. It's just your overall mental issue of it all. It's just your lack of being able to acknowledge what is actually happening uh, in the spiritual as well. Especially if you aren't actually engaging yourself in deliverance or you have other means to deliver yourself. Like, you know, you just keep reading the same old verse and the same old scripture over and over again. I know it's kind of like brainwashing it and those sort of things and that principle itself. But you could apply that to other forms and, and to other things that you need to apply it to. Uh, just because of the fact that you're not going to be able to. Really get out of that. A hole that you actually have dug yourself in through your overthinking and through uh, how you actually have just overreacted and exaggerated in those sort of situations. And that's it. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to deliver you right now. I'm breaking all these curses inside of your heart just because of what I actually had mentioned earlier with these sins. Being as if you actually are consistently committing them because they're just lying dormant inside of your heart. And I'm getting rid of the main ones and the ones that are actually going to cause you to not be able to view these things and to actually be able to see the results that you want to see and that you will see. Uh, and yeah, hold on, I'm still doing it more out of your emotions, especially because they're already in there. Uh, and something that you need to be able to acknowledge is the fact that you, when you actually begin to be impatient, you already have committed this sin of impatience in those sort of situations. If Christ automatically has called you to be patient, then what would, the, what would be the opposite of spirit, flesh? What is the opposite of patience, impatience? So that means that's a sin. That's just something that you need to be able to acknowledge, okay? Your definitions of sin are not correct and not right. Christ has a much more higher and a much more, you know, his ways are definitely higher than your ways and his 
his laws and, and whatever his knowledge and these sort of things themselves are definitely way higher so i mean the easiest means oh man i don't even want you to get i don't even want you to get all wrapped up into you know the flesh and those sort of things i just want you to be focused on wisdom wise things proverbs and, and just typically good advice the individuals are already giving you uh, for you to really be able to understand and to know you know there's a remedy there and that's what you need to be focused on uh so yeah impatience is definitely a sin christ uh expects you to be a lot more patient and that's it <laughs> i mean i don't know what you wanted to hear after that but that, that's essentially it if you weren't actually uh if you aren't actually able to produce those results in your life then i'm sad to say you're gonna you know, keep falling into sin and go straight into the lake of fire uh, for your lack of patience and lack of self-control in these sort of instances in your life as well as anything else uh, but definitely the, the the knowledge of sin is not prudence i know you want to go into sin and you want to learn all these sort of sins because you can learn the opposite of these things just focus on the remedies and just focus on on wisdom and wise things and the things that christ himself already commands you to do and stop overcomplicating these things and making these things a lot more and more difficult than you actually want them and more and more and more and more difficult than than they need to be and and that's just it so yeah i'm still delivering you because there's a lot in all honesty i know you want to believe that it's like four or five like mary magdalene but it's just not like that uh because of the fact of you actually obeying the law of moses and you don't none of your parents have ever obeyed it all these sins have just, you know, have uh, accumulated inside of your life. I'm sorry, I'm trying not to spit, but yeah, all these sins, they already have accumulated, and because of it, it's like you're paying for every single one of those sins, and it makes your your walk with Christ and your life with Christ so much more harder. And I know you don't notice it, but once you actually do begin to deliver yourself, that's when you actually will notice it, because you you know, your life just seems that much more easier and freer. And you're just like, what is this? And then now I'm actually able to hear God's voice more. And now I'm actually able to discern these sort of things. I feel that much more closer to God. And that's the reason why the deliverance works. And you're over here just, well, I'll do it when I get there. This, trust me, the devil just planted that down inside of your head to be able to advance their agenda. And never ends up happening. You never get there. Uh, yeah, I'm casting them out by the legion out of your heart because you essentially need it. As well as I'm praying to Christ to actually be able to help you do it yourself. Uh, to be able to get you to be encouraged enough to be able to see, uh, that it works and to continue with that sort of momentum and those sort of things as well. Don't be intimidated by the enemy kingdom of heaven dwells inside of you so you don't have to worry about you know the messengers coming inside of your life that's the old dispensation and the new dispensation is the holy ghost residing inside of your temple just uh like how christ actually has said the kingdom of god dwells in you and if you don't believe christ who are you going to believe the enemy who says you have to wait and wait and wait when the holy ghost is already inside of you no i mean it's pretty simple principles to be able to understand uh subjectiveness yeah i'm casting that you know spirit out of your life that is actually influencing your way of thinking that it's not uh letting you actually accept that uh way of thinking of it being no alternative to any of christ's commandments for your life because that's all it is if you personify the main uh, problems and the main issues and then you're actually going to be able to see what the root of the problem actually is instead of you like making these things difficult uh and to that level of understanding uh because you realistically don't know you realistically don't understand it at that extent to you it's just an, one legalistic loop what is going on i have to do it like this i'm not getting the results i, I want to see what is going on I have to do it like this. I'm not getting the results I want to see. 
and sadly that's just what keeps going on and on and on you just have to uh, personify these things and that's the real cause and the real answer as to why these things actually are happening inside of your life and now obviously I'm going to be losing graces, virtues and blessings uh, and integrities and a moral uprightness inside of your hearts, your minds, your soul, your will, and your emotions. That way, you actually are able to really see these results and to see it actually is true and real. And you're not suffering with it, you're being more patient in certain situations that you weren't as patient towards or on. As well as your overall, you know, how diligent you are in reading the scriptures and how you actually practice uh, little principles like that. These are going to be the main means to be able to. Uh, beat you down further and further in this deliverance and in this faith as well but if you continue you know playing video games and wasting your time watching all these movies and secular things like that you know you're not realistically really understanding it and and you know more what actually is happening and why you shouldn't be doing the things that you actually are doing it's just like well whatever you know I, once i actually do get over it and other little principles like that that cause you to continue living in that way of thinking and to live that whole approach out and then you're going to continue suffering you're going to continue falling for the lies of the enemy uh so that's why you know reading the the word of God is actually good, and uh, reading the Bible is so good for you in these times of deliverance because of the overall uh, discipline and knowledge that it in short fills you up with, you know, and that's what you essentially need more than now, more than ever, since you are a baby Christian that realistically does want to learn, wants to bear fruit, uh, doesn't actually want to do other things. There is just. Uh, worldly oriented and realistically you need to get to that level and to that extent or there's not going to be a point whatsoever because you, you're very lukewarm uh, and you're not living this sort of lifestyle that Christ wants you to live you're not meeting up to his expectations and you know you're going to continue falling flat on your face time and time again uh, and the loop the vicious cycle and the vicious loop continues going on and on so personify it and then personify the root of your problems because that's who is really uh, ruining your life i know it's you but it's just the fact that these are that devil itself that you personified is the one that's just uh appealing to your logic uh, and to your reasoning and because of it you are always inconsistently falling for the same old tactics and tricks of that little devil that is that you personified already so hopefully that's actually able to expose you know how much more intelligent they are than you and the fact that they already know you which is very pretty scary you know it's very illegal for them to actually be using your own you know knowledge of yourself against you but to you you don't actually know how illegal it is so that's why you let it continue uh going on in your life it's illegal don't let anyone do it if you want to let me do it then why are you letting them do it some sort of legality to it so flat out lie. your legality your legality comes from christ not from the devil or whatever the devil says you can't and can't do uh, that's that's it. Oh. Gonna ask Christ what else he wants to say. Use these as assets and tools to be able to um, form your eternal character. Because these are, these are the easiest means to be able to really mature you and grow you in the faith and to be more Christ-like. The knowledge really does help though because you're actually able to reach that level of understanding in your life as to why, you know, your overall approach and your overall mindset to these sort of things is the reason it's causing so much more trouble than you thought. Uh, and it's pretty sad. As well as the deliverance to know that anyone and everyone can do it if you just would believe. You know, it's pretty good uh, for those sort of things to be able to acknowledge it. But it's even better if, you, you know, if you're consistent and if you actually do apply yourselves and you're diligent. That's what I was trying to say. If you're consistent and diligent, then you're actually going to benefit from it. But if you aren't either one of those things, then you're going to consistently fall flat on your face. Uh, 
so yeah christ obviously wants well he wants me to tell you to be focused on your eternal character that's your main priority the spiritual warfare is not going to last forever your character is forever you don't want the devil to rob you of you know the potential benefits that you could actually reap while you're walking here on the face of this earth that you'll never be able to uh, experience those opportunities again so uh, obviously and take uh, advantage of the opportunities while you can uh, because it will benefit you in the future i know you don't want to admit it or you don't understand how but uh, just trust me i have that level of faith that it will benefit you in the future if it benefited me even in this day and age before everything is already said and done it definitely will benefit you that much more for your life uh and uh yeah, but obviously I'm still losing more grace inside of your vessel because you need more than you think. Uh, and in a strategic manner as well as overall because that's going to be the easiest means to be able to propel, uh, propel you, propel you forward to really acknowledge there's no alternative to it. Okay, love you, bye.